In this video, we are going to continue our conversation about solving systems of equations by substitution. You'll recall that these are the steps for solving a system of equations in two variables. And um, we're going to dive right in with some examples here. So remember, your first step is to always make sure that you have a variable isolated. So it can be either x or y in one of the equations. So that means that you need to either have x equals something or y equals something in at least one of your equations. It does not matter which one of these you have, but you do just need one of those things. So if I look at example one, we have two equations here, y equals x plus 7 and 2x plus 3y equals 31. This equation has y equals. So this equation has a variable isolated, so that's good. That means we can continue on using the substitution method. So I'm going to take what y equals in this equation, and I'm going to substitute that in for y in the second equation. So that second equation right now is 2x plus 3 times y. But instead of y, I'm going to write what y equals. y equals x plus 7. <coughs> so if you're looking at this bottom equation, 2x plus 3y equals 31, that's what we have down here. But we separate, we took that y, and instead of writing y here, we wrote what y equals. Now I have an equation to solve. The first thing you need to do is you need to use a distributive property here. 3 is being multiplied by this. So I'm going to have 2x plus 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 7 is 21. And then I'm going to bring down my equal sign and my 31. From here... I'm going to combine like terms, 2x plus 3x is 5x. I'm going to bring down my plus 21, my equal sign, and my 31. I want to get x alone to undo addition. I'm going to do subtraction and get 5x is equal to 10. And then to undo multiplication, I'm going to do division and get x is equal to 2. So right now I know the first part of my answer, because remember my solution is an ordered pair where the two lines cross. And so right now I know that x is 2. I'm going to take what x equals and I'm going to plug it into one of the two equations, meaning these two things right here. It doesn't matter which one you pick. I think this one looks like it's going to be faster and easier, so I'm going to choose that first one. So I'm going to have y equals 2 plus 7. All I'm doing is replacing x with what we found it to be. So instead of x plus 7, I have 2 plus 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. So I know that y is 9. This means that if I were to graph these two equations, they would meet at the point 2, 9. Again, the wonderful thing about this method is that you can check your work and see if you are correct or not. So let's go ahead and do that. To check my work, I'm going to plug into that first equation. That first equation is y equals x plus 7. We said that y was 9 and that x was 2. We're trying to prove that the left side of the equation equals the right side of the equation. 2 plus 7 is 9. Does 9 equal 9? Yes. Now let's try the other equation. The other equation is 2x plus 3y equals 31. When we solve for x, we got 2. And when we solve for y, we got 9. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 9 is 27. 4 plus 27 is 31. 
does 31 equal 31? Yeah, that's a true statement. That means that I've solved everything correctly and that my answer is 2, 9. Let's try example 2. We need at least one of our equations to be either x equals something or y equals something. Here in my second equation, I can see y equals x. So I'm going to take what y equals and plug it in for y in that other equation. So that means I'm going to have 12x minus 5. And then here, 5 was being multiplied by y. So now 5 will be multiplied by, y, by what y equals. And here, y equals x. So all I've done is take what y equals and plug it in for y in the top equation. So when I look at this, I now have the equation 12x minus 5x equals negative 21. I got that because negative 5 times x is negative 5x. From here, I can combine like terms. 12x minus 5x is 7x. I want to get x alone to undo multiplication. I'll do division and get x equals negative 3. So that means right now I know that the first part of my solution is negative 3. So I'm going to take that answer and I'm going to plug it in. And you can plug it into either one of your two original equations. This one right here looks like it's going to be faster, so I'm going to choose that one. So I'm going to have y equals x, and we just found that x was negative 3. So that means that y is negative 3. So if I were to graph these two equations, this means that they would intersect at the point negative 3, negative 3. Let's plug in and check our work. So that first equation is 12x minus 5y equals negative 21. So I'm going to have 12 times negative 3 minus 5 times negative 3 equals negative 21. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Negative 36 plus 15 is negative 21. Does negative 21 equal negative 21? Yes. If I plug into our other equation, our other equation was y equals x. We found that y was negative 3 and x was negative 3. Does negative 3 equal negative 3? Yes. So that means that we have done everything correctly and that this is my answer. Let's go ahead and try our last example. Remember that we want at least one of our equations to be y equals something or x equals something. In this example, I have y equals for our first equation. So I'm going to take what y equals in this equation and plug it in for y in my second equation. So that means I'm going to have 4x plus y is negative x plus 4 equals 1. Notice that for all of these, whenever I plugged in for y, I always use parentheses around that. And you do that just to make sure that you don't forget about distributing or multiplying anything. Like here I had to multiply y by 3, so I had to use a distributive property. Here I had to multiply y by negative 5, so I had to multiply here. With this y, there's nothing in front, so there's nothing to distribute. So you can go ahead and drop those parentheses since there's nothing to distribute there. That will happen once in a while. So from here, I can combine like terms. 4x minus x is 3x. I want to get y alone. So I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. And so I'm going to have 3x equals negative 3. Next, I can multiply both or divide both sides by 3 and get x equals negative 1. So if x equals negative 1, I can use that information and I'm going to plug into this first equation here. 
and I'm going to use that information to solve for y. So I'm going to have y equals negative x, so negative times negative 1 plus 4. A negative times a negative is a positive. 1 plus 4 is 5. So let me check my work to see if I did this correctly. If I plug into that first equation, y equals negative x plus 4, I'll have 5 equals negative times negative 1 plus 4. Negative times a negative is a positive. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 equals 5, so that works. If I plug into the other equation, I'll have 4 times negative 1 plus 5 equals 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 1 equals 1, so that works. So that means that I have done everything correctly, and negative 1, 5 is where these two lines would meet if we were to graph them in an equation.